so it's time we get this fixed. It's time to take my electric Hummer to the EV doctor for some professional diagnostics. Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This is the EV doctor. We've got Whisper here. We need to do some diagnosis. What brings you in today? All right, I need you to drop them and turn your head and cough. <coughs> Looks like we got a few issues. Let's see if we can solve them. Behind me is the electric converted Hummer from the channel Jerry Rig Everything. He's asked that I help sort out a few of the electrical issues. So I've spent quite a few hours helping Zach on this endeavor. So I am somewhat familiar with the electrical systems. We are gonna go into depth to see if we can make some of these electrical systems work and talk with each other. All right, so you may be wondering what systems we're gonna be working on. So there's really just five main components we're gonna be looking at. One is the inverter that talks to the motor. That's kind of gives it all its power. So we need it to communicate to display things like speed. Another one is the dash here. So this display will display elements from the motor like speed, but also things from like the battery management system. So how much voltage, percent charge, things like that. All right, we also have the vehicle control unit. So the vehicle control unit, it controls things like the inputs for the throttle, how much torque to provide to the motor, as well as the regenerative braking. In the middle is the battery management system. This is the Orion battery management system, and it kind of likes to be king of talking. So it wants to control everything. Also mounted under here is the charger. The charger is what converts the 220 volts AC and converts it into the 400 volts DC to charge the batteries. All right, so right now we've got these five systems and some of them aren't talking and communicating very well with each other. So we need to do some investigation. First, I'm gonna start with the charger. We're gonna try charging it. We wired this to an LED, so in theory, when it's charging, it should blink or at least give an indication so nothing's going there. We'll check with the charger. On the charger, it doesn't say it's charging. And this is with the car powered off. We'll see if it charges. Right now, the way we have things wired is the BMS needs to communicate with the charger to tell it it's okay to charge. Right now, that's not happening. I mean, the charger can't charge anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig in to see why things aren't talking. Um, I may break that connection point just to make sure the charger itself is working and then go after the communication. I am underneath the Hummer here. This is the mounting plate for the charger. And I'm just disconnecting things. So this is from the charge port. This is the bolts out. And then these are all the communication wires up there. So I'm just gonna pin everything out. Um, so if for whatever reason, um, the wires aren't connected correctly to the charge port or one of the communication wires. So we're gonna check all the wiring first. If that all pans out, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. We are just checking some continuity um, from the plug that goes into the charger and the charge port. Okay. The Hummer has the Siemens onboard charger and this has a plug and this requires the neutral to be on top with the live wires over there. So per the manual, the plug wants this one to be neutral. So I checked for the plug and this was neutral. So if you think that is correct, that is wrong. So what it is, even though it looks like, hey, they're both on top, this one actually has to be plugged in. So you have to kind of flip it around to plug it in. That means the neutral is going to go on the bottom. So we need to correct that. All right, it turns out that all the pins, these large pins are not all the same. So I am gonna have to clip them, get new pins and recrimp. So I've gotta wait to order some pins. Um, while we wait, I've been wanting to do something in my garage. All right, so I've been kind of designing and decorating the garage here, which has been really fun. I found something I thought would be really cool. Not only does it look cool, it's gonna actually improve the garage. So one of the issues I have is the garage is very echoey. You'll see all around there is just nothing but hard surfaces and the sound just echoes and bounces off everything. It makes it kind of loud, makes it hard to talk, hard to listen to music, um, hard to watch the game. So I found this cool product and I'm gonna give it a try. The company's called Feltright. 
and the company is local to me. These are the felt right tiles. Again, they look really good. Um, they've got a beveled edge. So these are felt pads and you hang them on the wall and they actually absorb sound and they look really good. So these are the adhesive pads. All right, so these are the colors I chose. We've got yellow, kind of a gray, black, and blue. So now we're gonna pick some sections of the wall and hang them up and see what that does for both the looks as well as the sound. So we just put the adhesive tabs in the four, kind of like a square. Just keep going. They have some that are pre-designed and you can come up with your own design. So it can really turn any space into your space. Again, it gives it a very nice touch. Uh, the echo is dramatically reduced. The felt right tiles are primarily used from recycled materials. They have lots of different styles and patterns you can choose from. So they have 30 different colors to choose from and dozens of shapes. So if you have a space that you're looking to decorate or improve the sound, look up felt right. I'll leave a link in the description below. The easiest way to switch the connection is actually on this side. Those pins, we can uh, disassemble this plug and kind of plug the pins in different locations. Uh, only drop two. All right, so we got all the four bolts out. So these nuts that were holding it, I had two of them actually go down the spout here. So this is something that uh, Zach and I left in place. This was the original kind of filler for the gas can. We just kept it to kind of protect all the wires. We now have two nuts that are down there. So we'll see if we can get them out. So I was able to get these nuts. Again, I've got this tool that's very flexible. It's got a magnet on the end. It's even got these uh, grasper things. Great little tool. We were able to take the receptacle off and we really just need to switch to these pins. But it's a little more challenging than that because one of these pins actually has a joined, connected to another pin that operates a relay that we need. Um, another thing that you can see, so I don't know if this was uh, upon removal, but uh, the wire shielding got damaged. So we'll go ahead and replace that as well. All right, I've got things rewired, pins replaced. I'm about ready to uh, give it a try here with the charger. My confidence, I think uh, I'm gonna give it about 25%. So I think there's 25% chance of work. There's a 75% chance that it is something else. <gasps> it's got a red light. I don't think it's charging though. I'm try it one more time. So the red light, so it's something, so it's, it's seeing it. Red light goes off and I don't hear anything else going on. All right, so here it says, if the red is on, it says charging stopped due to failures. So anything in the power stage or gateway. So I have to do some more discovery. That may not have seemed like a lot of progress, but we now have the AC power from the wall getting to the charger. The charger is recognizing it, wanting to charge, but something is not letting it. So that means the charger's uh, communicating and we're getting AC to the charger. So those are some pretty big steps. So I went through and made sure these all pinned out as well. KL30, 12 volt positive, that's there. KL31, ground is there. Uh, pilot and proximity, those work. 
or at least continuities have been verified. Can high and can low, those are there. The high voltage interlock, I thought that might be the issue. I've tried both shorted as well as open. Um, nothing seems to help there. So it seems like there is some other aspect, maybe it's in the CAN communication, that is not allowing it to charge. I know there were a lot of comments on Zach's video about the CAN bus and termination resistors. So the Hummer has uh, two 120 ohm resistors. Um, it's pretty easy to verify when you do a multimeter on the CAN bus, you get 60 ohms, that means there's two. If you get 40 ohms, that means you got three. If you got 120, that means you just have one. So there are two resistors. Um, it doesn't mean that we have a sound CAN bus yet. Just wanna let people know about that situation and I appreciate any and all comments. I've also verified that the AC connector is correct as well as the DC connector. So I've verified all the uh, pinouts are good. All right, well, we didn't get things solved just yet. We have made some progress. I do wanna get a video out because I know a lot of people are interested and I feel like the viewers are gonna be the ones that really help me solve this one. So if you've got some suggestions on what to try, please let me know in the comments. So the last thing that Zach said when he dropped this off was, I want you to take her. I mean it, take her. You know, I know what she means. I'll take good care of her. She, she won't get a scratch. I got your promise, <laughs> not a scratch. No, I guess before that he said, it's been about six months since I published my last video on this Hummer project, so don't feel like you need to put a video out right away. I, like you, am very excited to see this thing get finished. So I'm gonna work on it quite a bit and publish when I've got some good content. So I thought I'd post this quick video. We have a lot of new subscribers, have a lot of interest in this project. I wanna keep you guys updated. I will say I also have other projects I'm working on. So I'm finishing up just about complete with my first build. I've also purchased a car for my second build. So that'll be coming soon as well. So check your subscription status. Make sure you're subscribed. Got a lot of good content coming your way. That'll do it for this time. See you next time.